You know when you're in a store and you see something that's just so, and you just need it, it needs to come home with you right that very second? This, ladies and gentlemen, is a story of one of those times. <laughs> Over the summer, we went to Alaska, and in one of the towns we were in, we were shopping around, and we found a quilt shop. And it was full of beautiful, beautiful quilts, beautiful kits, beautiful fabric. And then I feasted my eyes on this thing. This is a tide pool quilt kit. I freaking love tide pools. And it just ended up in, next thing I knew, I was paying for it. And now it's here, and I have to figure out how to make it. I have made four quilts in my entire life. None of them have involved this level of applique. I don't know what's going to happen, but we're just gonna go ahead and get started with this. So, contents out. We've got all of our lovely fabric and we have another plastic bag that has the instructions. Anybody else ever feel like when they're reading crafting instructions that they are the boss dad on a road trip refusing to ask for external help? That's how I feel. Okay, step one, pre-wash all fabrics to black and remove excess dye. I can do that. To the washing machine we go. Do -do 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 -do. Washing machine. So after I put the clothes in the washing machine, this gave me enough time to read the instructions, watch a couple YouTube videos on how to do applique, and then go, meh, I've got this. Now my fabric was all out of the washer and dryer, but it was also all very wrinkly. So next up is I had to go grab the ironing board and iron all of that fabric, and thus fulfilling an exciting role of getting to become Iron Woman for the day and make all of that fabric flat and smooth and nice and to be cut out. And then I got to trace every single pattern piece onto my fusible interfacing, which was a time and a half. So at this point in the video, you're probably going, what is she doing? I don't actually know what a tide pool is. And she's just trying to draw on paper that is continually breaking her leg. As hard as it is for me to talk and draw at the same time, so too are tide pools terrible places to live. <laughs> well, a tide pool is a depression in kind of the coastline that when high tide, it gets covered by water. And when low tide, or when the water goes out, there is water left behind in those depressions. And a lot of organisms love to live there, but it's a really harsh environment to live in because you have to deal with exposure to the sunshine, exposure to hot air, warming water temperatures, predators that like to eat you, and not being always covered by water, as well as being constantly hit by more water as the tide goes in and out. And the type of animals that live in the tide pool have all specially adapted to be there. And today we're going to visit with a couple fun tide pool superstars on this quilt table runner. So we're gonna talk about sea stars, anemones, mussels, barnacles, and sea urchins. So that's gonna be hype, but first I have to trace all of this and keep breaking my lid. You know, I told my mom, who was a teacher, that the reason I couldn't become a teacher is because I don't have that teacher glide on the scissors. You know, teachers just like cut a sheet of paper and then they just glide the scissors the rest of the way. And I do that. Well, no teacher glide, can't become a teacher. All right, so it is day two of this project, and luckily it's turning out to be, in some ways, a lot simpler than I was expecting it to be. So I'm really happy about that. I've gone ahead and I finished ironing all that fabric because you guys don't need to see me ironing fabric. And I also matched up each traced piece to the correct fabric color, which was difficult in and of itself because I was just trying to look at the picture and make sure I had the right fabric color. Now the next step is I think I have to iron on these guys onto the fabric and cut them all out. So let's get started. And I got my coveralls all today, which is I'm pretty sure the universal outfit for getting stuff done. 
right da 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 that I all oh, that stuff down I I I I I I I all that stuff down This brings me back to the good old days of ironing on <gasps> Girl Scout patches new no. Oh gosh ah! So I did have to clean the iron probably like five times in the middle of this because I kept getting the adhesive from the fusible interfacing onto the iron itself, but I eventually got them all ironed on. I got them all cut out. It took forever and I just wanted to take a huge fat nap after I was done. Okay, we've made it to day three of this project and I spent all day yesterday finishing cutting out all of the shapes and I laid them all out on the map to make sure I had everything. And boy, did that almost make me go insane because some of the pieces are literally, I think, smaller than my pinky nail. And I was afraid they were going to get lost in the pile of scraps or just blow away. Or I wouldn't even realize it was a real piece because they were so tiny. So now that I've lost my mind cutting out every single one of those pieces and I think the sea urchins or maybe the sea anemone was the worst, we're gonna start putting it all together. So, the instructions. So this is gonna be a lot of ironing and <laughs> it's gonna hopefully be a lot of fun. We're gonna find out. So I'm gonna just do this in the order it tells me to put all the stuff together. Basically, I have to fuse together each individual, blah, blah, individual creature and then we put the individual creatures onto the backdrop. So we're gonna just start and do the sea anatomy, I guess. Let's head to the ironing board, even though I'm already at the ironing board. Pew pew. All right, so to do this, I had to take a little light and like backlight my pattern and then lay down each piece at a time, which was kind of a pain in the butt because the light was small, but it worked out. So first up, we have our sea anemone. Sea anemones are in the phylum Cnidaria, and that means they're related to jellyfish and corals actually and these guys are all related in the fact that they have what are called stinging cells or nematocysts which so you know if you touch a jellyfish you'll get stung because of the nematocysts but also sea anemones can sting as well funnily enough they have one hole um their mouth and butt are the same hole Woohoo, we love that. And the stinging cells I talked about provide protection from predators, which was one of that checklist items for what animals in a tide pool had to sustain. Another one was the fact that they had to be able to withstand being hit by crashing waves as the tide came in and out. And these guys can stay stuck in one place. So they anchor down pretty heavily on rocks and they can even close up and take all of their tentacles and hide them inside their body to help protect them from crashing waves as well. And this prevents them from drying out, another checklist item for our tideful creatures, and protects them from predators. Next up, we have our sea stars, which are some of my favorites. These guys are in the phylum Echinodermata, related to uh, sea cucumbers, sea anemone, not sea anemones, ugh, sea cucumbers, brittle stars, sand dollar sea urchins and to help them save themselves from drying out they have this hard spiny skin that prevents water from being um evaporating out through them and this also the hard spiny skin protects them from predators in addition they have to stay stuck to rocks and so what they have are these little tube feet which are little suction cup like things that help them to move stick to rocks and even get their prey um, with a combination of tube feet and hard spiny skin, they're very hard to remove from a tide pool. I can attest to that. I've lost many a fight to trying to pry a starfish out of a tide pool. The mussels in the tide pool are some of the things that they're going to eat. So they already have their food source right in the tide pool with them, those mussels. So we have our nice little sea star being built there. We love him and he's done, yay! Next up, we're gonna be making a barnacle. Well, these guys don't look like anything like their cousins. They are actually crustaceans. Isn't that wild? Yeah, they look kind of more like shelled organisms, I guess, like a mussel, but barnacles are in fact crustaceans. These guys, in order to stick to the rocks, they produce a fast curing cement, and that is what saves them from being washed away. Um, in addition, when they are exposed to sunlight or the air versus the water, they can close up into their hard shells when the water isn't covering them to prevent from drying out. And funnily enough, these guys 
basically also stand on their heads. So the little plume coming out of them is their legs. And that's what they use to collect yummy, yummy food. When the water is in the tide pool, they can reach out and collect the food. When the water is in the tide pool, they retract those little legs, close up shop, and prevent drying out and stay pretty stuck to those rocks as well. It's also very hard for myself to pull a barnacle off of a rock. Woohoo, barnacles! <laughs> Next up, we have the muscle. These guys overcome that whole, hey, don't wash me away thing by using what are called beards or little sticky threads to stick them onto the water. These guys are mollusks related to octopi and are bivalves. They also close up when the water is low and they also are filter feeders. So now as I fuse together all of the other pieces, I need to take a second to talk about sea urchins. These guys are echinoderms, just like the sea stars. They have two feet too that help keep them stuck to the uh, rocks when the water gets in the way. And they have spikes, which as you can imagine, protect them from predators and protect them from being picked up by me. So then I got to put all of the stuff on there in the correct order and it was a great time. All right, so wrapping up whatever day we're on to, I don't know, I've lost track of this project. <laughs> I have gotten everything ironed onto this and I haven't gone insane yet. My brain hurts though and my eyes definitely hurt. I'm gonna call this a wrap for the day because mainly I've been working on this for like six hours and it kept slipping and sliding and I kept getting angry and I definitely ironed on a few things wrong and here we are, but it is done. And tomorrow we will start with attaching it to the rest of the backdroppy pieces and it gets to be quilted. So the hard part I think is done. At least all of the fine detail work is done. At one point I had to get out tweezers because the pieces were not staying put and no, tweezers were the only thing that would help. <laughs> so that's a wrap on day two. We'll see you tomorrow for day three. Hello, we are on day four of this project i don't know it's thursday but i have lost track of how many days i have been working on this and just a reminder we have finished the top part of this um and since it has been overnight i have sufficiently been able to distance myself from the project in order to appreciate how cool it turned out so today i'm going to be hopefully getting this part onto this part which then all goes onto this back part and then it gets quilted and then finished all off. And then I'll show you how it all turns out. So that's my plan. And by a day, I mean, it's either gonna take me only today or it's going to take me a couple of days. But either way, in your little video world, it's gonna be like I did all of this in one day. Although in your little video world, it's gonna be like I did all of this in approximately however long the video is, which will be less than four days long. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with all of that ironing and plugging in the iron and let's get this thing finished. I know, I said the next time that you would see me, the Tide Pool Quilt Runner would be all done and I'd be hanging up on my wall and that just didn't really happen because while it is, the top is done and turned out way better than I was expecting. Because it turned out way better than I was expecting, I made the executive decision to drop it off at a actual person who has a long arm quilter and will machine quilt this to make it look even better instead of me trying to do it myself and messing it up. So I'm gonna be dropping off the quilt to her um, later this week and well, I guess later this week as in actually really the day before this video goes up and it'll take a couple of weeks for her to get through it all and get it back to me for me to finish it up. So this is how it's gonna rest for this video. It turned out really good and I can't wait to see it quilted. When it is quilted, I will provide a little update about that. But I hope you guys enjoyed learning more about tide pool and tide pool creatures, as well as getting to see me struggle cutting out a billion tiny pieces. And guess what? I didn't actually cut up the pattern, so if I ever wanted to make another one, I could, right? No, don't, no, 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 no. Um, I guess it probably technically goes this way. So it's done, hope you enjoyed learning about Tide Pools. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know if you have any further questions about Tide Pools or the animals that love to live them down below in the comments. I'd love to answer them. Uh, thank you again. I'm just gonna say thank you 20 billion times for watching this video. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel. I post on Fridays and keep it sciencey. Oh.
Holy kelp. Look at all those pieces. Sea kelp. Sea kelp. Sea kelp. This is like the extreme tracing and cutting exercises you would do in like kindergarten. I bet a kindergartner could probably do this better than me. No! Just kidding, I'm just not left-handed, which I feel like is now helping me out in this situation.